This is the brand new Dacia Sandero and it is by far the cheapest new car in the UK right now. But it isn't just cheap, we actually reckon this is the best small hatchback you can buy. So stay with us and in this video I'll be telling you exactly why that is. Oh, and make sure you stay watching right to the end because I've got an important revelation about this car that might surprise you. But before we get properly started, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and if you want to buy a Sandero or any other new car, head over to whatcar.com or Google what car deals. It's completely free to get a quote and you could save yourself a lot of money. Now, if you aren't familiar with Dacia, it's a Romanian brand that's owned by Renault these days, and it's been selling cars in Britain since 2013. All of its models to date, including the old Sandero, have been almost unbelievably well-priced, but in return for that, you always felt like you were getting a car from a bygone era. And to be honest, we were expecting more of the same from this new version. But then we heard it was going to be based on the latest Renault Clear, which is a very good super mini and one that's only been on sale for around a year. Now, as I've already said, this is the cheapest new car you can buy, and it starts at just 7995 But what do you actually get for that? Well, believe it or not, you get these full LED headlights with this modern-looking daytime running light signature pattern up here. You also get electric front windows, automatic emergency braking, six airbags, an SOS system that can automatically call the emergency services for you if you're involved in an accident, and a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty. The problem is that you have to make do with the entry-level SCE engine, and we'll explain why that's not a good thing a bit later on. We reckon you'll want to upgrade to at least mid-level essential trim, which starts at 8995 because that gets you a height-adjustable driver's seat, air conditioning, cruise control, remote central locking, and a basic infotainment system with a DAB radio, Bluetooth, and a USB socket. You also get body color bumpers and some hubcaps to make the car look a lot less like a budget holiday rental car. Now this actual car is roughly equivalent to what will be range topping comfort trim in the UK and it's the one to go for if you can because you get body coloured door mirrors, electric windows in the back, parking sensors, a reversing camera, automatic wipers, keyless entry and an 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. You might have noticed this car has alloys. You can't actually get them on any UK version of the regular Sandero, only the Stepway. But if you go for range topping comfort trim, you get hubcaps that do a surprisingly good impression of alloys. The price for this range topping comfort model is 11595 And if that sounds quite a jump, then remember it's still more than a thousand pounds less than you'll pay for an entry level Hyundai i10, which is obviously a smaller, less practical car. But just how practical is the new Sandero? Well, very actually. Let's start with the boot because it is actually bigger than every other Super Minis, at least when it comes to our own measurements, because we managed to fit six carry-on size suitcases below the passenger shelf here. That's one more than the Honda Jazz and the VW Polo managed, and the same as the Seat Leon, which is a car from the class above. The only slightly annoying thing is that there's a big drop down from the entrance onto the boot floor. And also this exposed bodywork along here is almost certainly gonna get scratched. So I'd probably recommend getting yourself some protective film to cover that up. Now, if you go for entry level access trim, these rear seat backs, they do fold down, but they do so in one massive piece. Whereas if you go for essential or comfort trim, you get 60, 40 split folding rear seats. And that gives you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to carrying people and luggage at the same time. There's also more space in the back than you get in most cars in this class. As you can see, loads of headroom and this seat in front here, that's set up for my driving position. I'm just over six foot. And as you can see, plenty of legroom as well. It's only really the Honda Jazz in this class that has noticeably more. Now, if you go for entry level access trim, then we really wouldn't recommend putting more than two people in the back because whoever sits in the middle here, well, they won't have a head restraint. But if you go for essential or comfort trim, then you do get three height adjustable head restraints as standard. And although there's a little bit of a hump down here on the floor, fitting three adults across the back shouldn't be too tricky at all. All versions of the Sandero do get ice fix mounts on the outer two rear seats as well. In the front, again, very roomy by the standards of the class. You've got loads of headroom up here and seat slides back a long way. If you're long in the legs, that's a good thing. But the best thing about this is that you get a steering wheel that adjusts for reach as well as height. Now that wasn't the case on the old Sandero because the steering wheel only moved up and down. And I remember I always had to sit a little bit closer to the pedals than I really wanted to, to reach the steering wheel properly. Whereas on this car, driving position is absolutely fine. Although it is worth noting that if you go for entry level access trim, you won't get a height adjustable driver's seat. 
Visibility, not much to complain about really, certainly when you're looking out of the front or diagonally. And as I mentioned earlier, if you go for range topping comfort trim, then you get rear parking sensors and a reversing camera. So the fact those pillars back there are a bit chunky is only gonna be an issue if you go for one of the cheaper trim levels. But I reckon one of the best things about the new Sandero is its interior. Now, I'm not gonna pretend it's particularly luxurious in here. Certainly compared with a Polo or a Peugeot 208, it does feel built to a budget but it's cheap and cheerful rather than cheap and nasty. And there is a big difference. And actually, I'd rather be spending time in here than I would in a Skoda Fabia or a Hyundai i20. And remember, both of those are much more expensive cars, and that's a big compliment to the Sandero. There aren't any soft touch plastics in here, but Dacia has borrowed a trick used by Peugeot for years and fitted fabric inserts on the dashboard and on the doors to give things a bit of a lift. And the heat events on the old Sandero, they looked like the cheapest things Renault could find in the parts bin. Whereas here, look, a bit of swoopy design going on. And if you go for comfort trim, you get chrome rings around here and some chrome finish on the door handles as well. You also get slightly more upmarket fabric on the seats and what Dacia calls a soft touch steering wheel. Plenty of storage in here as well. You've got a nice big cubby here in front of the gear lever, which is useful for stowing your phone or the key. You've got a couple of cup holders just behind here, useful for hand sanitizer at the moment. And you've got another cubby under the armrest, which I've handily stored a mask. You've also got pretty big door bins down here, which are plenty big enough for a big bottle of water. And the glove box is a reasonable size as well. The rest of the dashboard, very easy to use. You've got nice big chunky dials down here for the air con. You've got nice big clearly labeled buttons up here. And that brings me on to this eight inch touchscreen infotainment system. Now you only get this if you go for range topping comfort trim, but it's really good actually. It's easy to use by touchscreen standards, the graphics are good, and you get Apple and Android smartphone mirroring as standard, which can work over Wi-Fi, so you don't necessarily need to plug your phone in every time you want to sync it up. It's a little bit annoying there's no proper volume knob, so you have to stab away at these touch sensitive buttons here at the edge of the screen. But you can also use this stalk behind the steering wheel, which is fine when you've given it a bit of practice. So overall, really impressive and actually far better system than you get in some of the most expensive cars in this class, like the Honda Jazz and the Toyota Yaris. You get this smartphone cradle up here on the dashboard on all versions, and you'll certainly be using it a lot if you go for essential or access trim, because neither of those cars get smartphone mirroring. In fact, entry level access trim doesn't even get you a radio. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Sandero is based on the latest Renault Clio, but it does feel quite different to drive, and that's intentional. There's no doubt about it. So while the Clio is one of the sportier cars in this class, this is more laid back. It leans more through corners. But certainly compared with the old Sandero, this car feels like a hot hatch. It is far more agile, and the steering is faster. You get a better sense of connection with the front wheels as well and that's a good thing it gives you confidence particularly when you're driving along a greasy wet road in winter like i am today it rides nicely as well it's certainly one of the more comfortable cars in this class because it doesn't matter whether you're in town on a country road like this or you're hammering along a motorway it deals with bumps really quite well actually and let's be honest the vast majority of people who are going to be buying this car are going to be more concerned by comfort than cornering thrills anyway. The cheapest engine is a one litre petrol called the SCE and although we haven't tried it yet it probably is best avoided. That's because it doesn't have a turbocharger so it only has 64 brake horsepower. That's less than an entry-level Kia Picanto which is obviously a much smaller car. 0-62 takes 16.7 seconds officially, so that makes it one of the slowest cars on sale today. The more expensive TCE engine is also a one litre petrol, but it is turbocharged, so it's much more powerful. It still doesn't give the Sandero spectacular performance. There are faster cars in this class, that's for sure, but acceleration is perfectly acceptable and there's a lot more pull from low revs. And it just makes the Sandero feel as at home on the motorway as it is around town. Go for the TCE engine, which isn't available with entry-level access trim, and you also get a six-speed manual gearbox. If you go for the SCE engine, you get a five-speeder. And actually, it's pretty nice to use. It's light, fairly precise, and you also get a positive, nicely weighted clutch pedal. So this is a much, much easier car to drive at low speeds than the old Sandero was. What's not so good? Well, it's certainly not the quietest car in the class. 
you just don't get the impression there's a huge amount of sound deadening material in here because you hear more of the outside world than you do in cars like the Polo, the Peugeot 208 and actually even the Ford Fiesta. And I don't know if you can hear but when I accelerate there's a whine from the turbocharger that you just don't get in the most expensive cars in this class. But it's far from terrible, I mean it's a lot quieter in here than it would be in a Suzuki Ignis or an MG3, for example, and they are cars that are more closely priced to the Sandero, remember. So it's something you're likely to be aware of rather than particularly annoyed by. But here are five more things you might want to know about the new Sandero. As with the old Sandero, an SUV-inspired stepway model is also offered. It costs around a thousand pounds more than an equivalent version of the regular Sandero, but gets you chunkier bumpers and wheel arches, roof bars, and an extra four centimeters of ground clearance. The stepway is also available with an exclusive higher trim level called Prestige, which adds, among other things, 16 inch alloys, climate control, and blind spot monitoring. The entry-level SCE engine is no more economical than this turbocharged TCE. Both engines average 53.3 mpg and pump out 120 grams of CO2 every kilometre, which incidentally is an exact match for our favourite VW Polo. For an extra £400 you can have a biofuel version of the TCE engine and that is worth thinking about if you do a lot of miles because at the moment LPG costs around half as much per litre as unleaded. The only other options are metallic paint, that's £560, a spare wheel, that costs you £150, and an automatic gearbox. You can only have that on the TCE engine, and that costs £1,200. The safety experts at Euro NCAP haven't yet finished testing the Sandero, but our insiders tell us it's unlikely to get the organisation's top five-star rating. But you shouldn't necessarily be overly concerned by that for a couple of reasons. One, the testing standards have recently become a lot stricter and many other small hatchbacks that are currently on sale also wouldn't receive the top score if they were retested now. Secondly, the Sandero is structurally very solid. It's based on the new clear, remember, so it's likely to protect you very well in an accident. The reason it's unlikely to score top marks is because it isn't available with the very latest driver assistance systems, including adaptive cruise control and self-steering. Now, I said right at the start that I had an important revelation about this car, and that is that we've just voted it our 2021 car of the year. That means that we think this is the best car that's been launched over the past 12 months. Now, we've always respected the Sandero because if you wanted to buy a brand new car and you didn't want to spend a lot of money, then it was one of very few options and it wasn't a bad buy at all. But this new version is a massive step forward and it feels like a properly modern small car just a very cheap one. Would it have won the award if it cost the same as a Polo? No, it wouldn't. But then the BMW 3 Series, well, that wouldn't be our favourite executive car if that cost £60,000. And the Porsche Cayman wouldn't be our favourite sports car if that cost £100,000. Everything has a price. And I'll tell you what, with the new Sandero, you feel like you're getting an absolute bargain. But for lots more information on the Sandero and all of our award winners, head over to our awards microsite by clicking the link up there at the top of the screen. And remember, if you want to buy any new car, whatcar.com is the place to get a great deal. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment. And other than that, we'll see you next time.